Chapter 15. It hurts. Of course it hurts. You nearly twisted your arm off. Martha groaned and tried to raise her head. Connor, no, we can't leave till the doctor says we can. He watched the confusion on her face and added, you remember where you are, don't you? You drifted off again just now. Martha stared at him for a moment and then without warning, her face crumpled and she began to cry. Hey, Connor came to the bedside, patting her shoulder awkwardly. Martha, come on now. Don't. But somebody tried to kill me, Martha sobbed. Don't you believe me? Connor regarded her unhappily, but before he could answer, a nurse leaned through the doorway, giving them a smile. You can take her home in a little bit. The doctor wants to give her a prescription. Thanks, Connor said, and looked down again as the nurse left. I don't want to go home, Martha cried softly, and the throbbing in her arm squeezed her whole body. Please, Connor? Martha, Connor sat down at the side of her bed, his eyes clear and troubled. I called the police after I brought you here. They didn't find anyone, and they didn't take me very seriously. Of course they didn't find anyone. He ran away when he saw your car. Where were you? I told you before, Connor said patiently. When you didn't show up on time, I got worried and went to look for you. I couldn't get in because the doors were all locked, and He broke off at the sudden commotion in the hall, and a moment later, Blake and Greg came hurrying into the room. Martha, are you okay? What the hell happened? Blake, what are you doing here? Martha looked confused as she wiped clumsily at her eyes. They told us you were here. I didn't believe it. Blake leaned over the bed and stared at her cast. What are you doing here? Connor asked quietly. He stood his position by her bed and something in his voice caused Martha to look at him curiously. Greg moved to the other side of her pillow and peered earnestly into her face. His smile sympathetic. Boy, kiddo, when you have a run of bad luck, you really go all the way, don't you? You're not supposed to be here, Connor said. Blake barely gave him a glance as he crowded in and took Martha's free hand. Are you okay? Are you hurt bad? Martha fought the sedation, but it was hard to think clearly. I, I fell down the stairs. Where? Did you break anything else? She shouldn't be talking, Connor said. She needs to rest. I'm taking her home. I don't want to go home, Martha said automatically. Someone's trying to hurt me. Martha? Connor began, but Blake cut him off. What are you talking about? He sat down on the edge of the bed, nudging her over. Who's trying to hurt you? Someone was following me, Martha blinked, trying to keep things in focus. And someone turned out the lights and followed me. She's not up to this right now, Connor interrupted, but Blake jumped up. I'm calling the police. I already did that. Wait a minute. Greg put up his hands, motioning Blake back down. What about the lights? He turned them off, Martha tried to sit up, straining against Blake's arms. The lights went off, and he... Martha, Greg said gently, there was a power failure tonight because of the rain. The lights were out all over, off all over town for a little while. Martha stared, her eyes glazed. They went out. She murmured, they went out because he turned them off. Connor, tell them I didn't dream it. Blake co coaxed her down again, staring with grave concern. Greg glanced over at Connor and then nodded toward the hall. Can I talk to you for a minute? They walked out to the waiting room, and for several moments, Greg, Greg paced, frowning down at the floor. Finally, he stopped and looked at Connor, and Connor slid his hands into his back pockets and waited. Look, Greg drew a deep breath. Maybe I should have said something before now. I understand your folks are out of town. Connor nodded. Well, the truth is, Martha's under a lot of stress. She's doing terrible at school. I think she knows that. Not that it's so abnormal. New family, new school, new peer group. I'm not saying she's imagining what happened tonight, but the last time she talked to me, she was really upset about your house going on about secret passageways and fires and it's a strange house connor said it has lots of inconsistencies oh, i understand greg looked down at the floor again his tone guarded look i'll be glad to do what i can to help her through this rough time but you might consider professional help connor nodded rocking back on his heels a muscle worked in his jaw martha's fine he said yeah well Greg straightened and glanced at the clock on the wall. I've got to get to work. I'm on a teen hotline here at the hospital two nights a week. Blake gave me a lift over. He backed towards a doorway that led off to another hall. You might talk it over with your parents. If I can do anything, he left the offer unfinished. Connor stared after him and then went back into Martha's room.